Hello, and welcome to another video about Motion Canvas. In the last few videos, we talked about the animation flow. In part one, we went over about yields and generators uh, without really thinking about Motion Canvas. And in part two, we talked about the animation flow and how um, a generated function is very important and what it really means and what it does. We also uh, went through a bunch of functions so we talked about all, any, chain, delay, sequence, loop, um, had a looping demo, um, how to use array.map and all, and for loops, and a whole bunch of other stuff so that we are able to now make this looping animation. This time, we're going to go to the next one in the list and talk about scene hierarchy. So scenes are very important in Motion Canvas. It's how you make your animations, like this is a scene. If I click right here, video settings, scene graph, this is your scene. Um, okay, so they're organized in a tree hierarchy with the scene view at its root. So view.add, is the scene view. So in this case, we have our scene view there. And then, um, and then from there we have um, what's similar to a document object model or the DOM, which is used in HTML and XML documents, we have our other components. Um, so we have a circle, which is over here, and then we have a layout which is over here. Inside that layout, there are children components. Uh, one is, re is a rectangle, which is over here, and then the other one is text that says hello. So then this over here is text that says hello. If we go over to our example from last time, we just have, at the same level, five rectangles on, underneath the scene view. Each node is an instance of a class extending the base node class. To make, a to make the code more uh, readable, Motion Canvas uses custom, J uses, uh, custom JSX. What is JSX? JSX, um, if I click over here, uh, yeah. So JSX is um, JavaScript extension. So yeah, it's an ex syntax to an extension to JavaScript. It is essentially writing JavaScript in an HTML way, um, is a way of putting it. So in this case, you can embed it, you can, where's the example I'm trying to find? Um, you can essentially have functions that appear as if they are um, an element, really. I don't think this shows it, it. But essentially, that's what Motion Canvas does. This circle maps to a function or a method or a class called circle. And by doing this, you initiate a new instance of that class circle. Um, so they are classes. A class circle, this is a class layout, class rectangle, class text. And you and it's a very simple way of doing things. You don't need to do the JSX way. Um, you can initiate the nodes yourselves and instead of doing it as an XML or JSX way, you can actually call them classes yourself. So this circle syntax actually means this. This layout syntax actually means this. Okay. So hope hopefully this is this is helpful. Seeing the difference between the two. So modifying the hierarchy. After the hierarchy has been created, it is still possible to add, remove, rearrange the nodes at any time. Well, rearranging is what we're doing over here. We're rearranging the nodes. 
um, three range at any time. The node class contains the children and parent properties that can be used to traverse, traverse the key, but in order to modify it, it is recommended to use the following help, helper methods. So you have node.add, where you can add a child. So in this example, you have a node called a layout, and we're going to do node.add rectangle, node.add circle. So if you wanted a circle inside of another circle or a layout inside of another layout, you can do node.add layout. What you can also do is if I, uh, let's just use this over here. It won't be valid, but it'll get my point across. So you can have a const layout, which is right here. You can have node two. And what you can do is you can do node.add if you want another layout. But instead of having that layout, you just add that. And then what you can do is node2.add. And let's say we wanted to have another circle. Not 22, just two. Cannot find name layout, yeah. It's, that's because it's an example. Here, I'll make it happy. There it goes. So yeah, so you have two nodes. You you put the rectangle and circle in the first layout, which is what this shows. And then what I did over here was I created a, another reference to a layout, to a node, and then I added the circle here. What this allows us to do is if we wanted to modify this layout, we could do so. Likewise, if we just wanted to have the rectangle and circle, and I might be getting my head of myself. They might be showing you this momentarily in the documentation, but, and you can do this. And that's essentially what we're doing over here. And then you can go, hey, for this rectangle, I want to modify the height. I want to modify this. I want to modify that, like right here. Rect dot position. So I can go rect dot position dot y is whatever. And you can do it this way. That works. So let's see what they say over on this side. So we have the node equals layout. You're adding a rectangle, you're adding a circle. These are your children. Node.insert. So insert a given node at a specific index in the children list or children array. So if you look at it, we start with the layout, with this layout, where we have a rectangle on one side, circle on the other. If we wanted to add a text in the middle, um, we just do insert text one. Now, why is it one? Because if we go back over to here, this is, noto is a special notation for this. This is a children's array. The items inside of this are technically in an array. And with Node.js or JavaScript or most languages, it indexes at zero. So one or zero, one. If I wanted to insert something at index one, I go zero, next one's one, I insert my stuff, then we have two. So that's what happens over here. We want to insert it in the one index. So when we're done, it will be at index one. So we have index zero, one, and two. That's what we have. Um, then we have remove. This is, you can remove a node. So if I wanted to do, if I had that reference like I had before where it was rectangle, I can put rect.remove. It removes the node from the tree. Change the parent of the node while keeping the absolute uh, transform. After performing this operation, the node will stay in the same place visually, but its parent will change. So this is reparent. So 
essentially if I wanted the parent of this item of text to be circle, I could say um, text dot reparent and then give it the parent of circle. Then we have uh, move up node, move the node up in relationship to its siblings. So it could move up an index, move down, very similar, move to the top, you can move it to the very top, move to the bottom, move it to the very bottom, move to, move it to wherever you want it, move, move above. Um, the node will move above the provided node in form. Uh, and from then on, it will be rendered on top of it by default. If the node is already positioned higher than the sibling node, it will not get moved. So this is, we're getting, with all this move above, move below, we're now talking about what's called a Z index. So if I go Z index, it's a CSS thing uh, where I can have my different indexes. So we have change my index. Okay. So Z index. Oh, it's a cool example. So we have index two is on the bottom. Then we have uh, four is on top of two. Six is on top of four and two. If this index of this bigger sheet is now index one it now goes above auto if it's two it now also goes above or if it's three it goes above two five seven it's on top of everything so in motion canvas and this is essentially rendering it using um, your browser you have this notion of z index and this is what it modifies behind the scenes you can move it below above remove children move all the children underneath the node um, we're in the hierarchy. So if we look at this example, sometimes it can be useful to transverse the hierarchy and find some specific node. In this documentation, we'll be rendering this process as querying. Consider the following animation. So we have um, this example is changing from white to like a yellow orangish color. And then we have what looks like money, 42 stars or 42 circles, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So if we look at how they made this, okay, we have our imports, which is fine. View.add, we have our layout. We start with the layout. Um, we have a gap, guessing that's between our different items. Align item center, okay. Then we have text that is white so as an example then we have a rectangle inside that rectangle we have more text that says 42 we have a circle and we have more text down here we have view which is right here find all entities so if we go up here we should have the find all method if we skipped it or not I guess not so anyway there's a find all function oh here it is that will find all um, items in this view that is that is of type text so it is is a uh, returned back a boolean true or false and it will loop through all of the children and say, hey, are you text? Yes. Okay, add it to this new array. Okay. And then it says all texts. And we want to change the fill color from what you were, which was white, to this other color, which is what the circle is in one frame and then back. Okay, so it, reading what it says, it contains multiple text nodes whose colors oscillate between yellow, white and yellow. To achieve that, we use view find all is text to search through the descendants 
of the view node and select only those of type text. The first argument passes, passed to find all method, is a so-called precedent. This function that takes a node and returns true if it's the node we're looking for, essentially what we said. For instance, if we wanted to find all nodes whose scale x is, is greater than 1, we could write this. Knowing this, we could try to find all nodes of type text, which is this, um, node.instance of, of text. So what this instance of, it's, a, it's not a motion canvas thing, it's a Node.js thing uh, or JavaScript thing, where it says, is this an instance of this class, essentially? So you could actually put the node class because everything inherits or everything is a node class. But in this case, we just want to do of type text. Motion canvas, because this is so common, um, says we're going to put that as a function and call it is. Where did I skip to? I skipped to the utils. I'm not even there yet. Um, where was I? Yeah. And motion canvas made a little helper called is, which creates this precedence for us. So his is just a function behind the scenes. I'm sure it looks like function is name return name what is it is is text so yeah so you'd get name instance of actually this is it's is text. So yeah, and it would be similar to that. Um, yeah, these can be used with any JavaScript function that accepts a pre predicate. The find all method has been implemented to traverse all the descendants of the node, but if we wanted to query only the direct children, we could retrieve children array and call the built-in filter method instead. So in that case, if we just wanted the example instead of 42, we could just do dot children filter is text. There are a few other methods that can be used to query the hierarchy depending on your needs. No dot find all is a helpful one. Um, it finds all the descendants of this node that matches the given um, predicate. Um, find first, so I'll give you the first one. Find last, we'll give you the last one. Find ancestor, find the closest ancestor of this node that matches the given um, values. And that's it for scene hierarchy. Uh, next time, we're going to go over positioning. So I look forward to talking to you all then. Till then, have a great day.